Welcome everyone. We are live. Uh, so when you're live with me, drop a comment that you're here and let me know where you are dialing in from. That's super important uh, for me to know if I'm actually talking to people who are there or if I'm talking to people who are watching the recording. So uh, either way, let me know that you are there. So today we're going to be talking about what FDA is saying about the use of host light images for toxicological uh, pathology. So I have my here guidance document here with me. Let me know if you see this document. And um, basically, I'm going to tell you what. So this is guidance for the industry. Let's let's have this one highlight guidance for the industry. So uh, what's happening here? is we have a document they're saying kind of what is recommended it's a draft guidance as well because uh, there was a comment period where people were able to post comments um but they're saying it's just a guidance uh, you know don't uh, like take it too literally and i see people coming i see victoria is there with us Bob is there, fantastic. And you guys see the documents, fantastic. It's great to have you here live. I am super happy to have you here live. This is always uh, reassuring <laughs> that we're there at the same time. So this guidance, right? Uh, before we dive into the guidance, the guidance is structured in a very nice way. I'm going to show you. Uh, but who am I even to talk about this? This is some guidance. Uh, I am... Uh, qualified or I like self-qualified myself to talk about it because I read this document like five times or probably maybe seven times uh, analyzing this for different things that I do for my work and I have uh, also presented it internally at several occasions so I decided to present it to you as well so that you don't have to go and read it because honestly it's not the most thrilling document. I mean, it's FDA document. All due respect, uh, the goal of this document is not to be entertaining. <laughs> so I hope I'm going to be a little bit more entertaining than just reading this document. So guidance for the industry. Our guidance has uh, here, let me scroll. It has an introduction, background and questions and answers. What we're going to focus on are our questions and answers. Um, why is it not doing anything? Anyway, questions and answers is going to be what we're going to be talking about. I want to, yeah, okay, I can highlight. Fantastic. Um, before uh, I talk about those uh, questions and answers, let me know, were you familiar for this? For, uh, well, were you familiar with the fact that FDA actually said something about, oh, this is how we recommend you use digital pathology for non-clinical pathology, for toxicologic pathology. Toxicologic pathology was everything that happens before the drugs, before the compounds uh, are actually administered to humans. So this is not the classical primary diagnosis uh, thing where we have medical devices. It is more GLP, uh, where it is more, it is GLP, good laboratory practice um, regulations. This is Code of Federal Regulations. But let me know, did you know, yes or no, that this is out there? And, you know, you can download it at any time. I'm going to make it bigger, maybe. Make myself smaller and make this thing bigger. Or how about that? Is that working? Okay. We can do this. No, sorry. I want this to be visible. Ah, let's do this. So, uh, question one, what is host light imaging? Uh, host light imaging, this question probably we can um, do it very fast because everybody interested in digital pathology knows what host light imaging is. This is this uh, digitized, digitization of glass slides. So here, uh, generating two-dimensional digital image. And uh, um, here is, a, is an interesting part here, two-dimensional. We are not talking about anything three-dimensional. We're not really talking about something that is dynamically zoomable. Um, and this is two-dimensional. So, you know, with um, just a flat image. Uh, 
a glass of histology slide used for routine assessment in generation of pathology report. So the data in the non-clinical world, in the preclinical tox path world, whichever word you want to use, is the pathology report. This is considered data as per GLP regulations. So if we are using whole slide images for this particular purpose, we are. Uh, this is what we are generating our data off of. So um, yeah, and uh, we can see here that due to some limitations of the scanning, FDA does not consider the resulting digital image to be an exact copy of the glass slide. It's not an exact copy, but uh, it is, they are basically telling us here, uh, it is good enough. There is a term called faithful replica, uh, that it is a faithful replica, it's good enough to generate data on, to generate pathology report. On. And then the question comes, should whole slide images be ret um, retained? And a quick answer, yes, it should be retained. So... What's happening here is if uh, whole slide images, in the previous question, we saw, okay, whole slide images are good enough to do your job as a pathologist on if you're a toxicologic pathologist, if you're doing toxicological evaluation. Good. One green light. Uh, second question, should you retain them? Well, if you're doing your work on glass slides, then you retain them. If you are now doing your work on digital slides, logically, you retain them as well. So GLP, if, um, let me know if you are working in a GLP environment. Put a GLP if you are, and if you're not, put an NGLP, non-GLP. <laughs> uh, because for those who are in GLP, uh, that's going to be obvious, but I want um, everybody to, uh, you know, take it home. So uh, for GLP, there's a lot, the main focus or like, the focus is on uh, traceability of your data, of, of um, on being able to uh, retrieve and trace the information and uh, retrieve why you um, got to the results. So if there ever would be something, um, I, I see uh, here we have some uh, GOP, fantastic. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so in the previous... Um, and yes, I will post the link uh, to the guidance. I'm going to post it in the description of this uh, broadcast. So um, totally, it's going to be there. So, um, but long story short, you retained glass. Now you're doing your job on digital images. Yes, you retain digital images. And what do they tell about this? They say that if whole slide images are assessed in lieu of original glass slides, so if you're now doing your job on um digital, then yes, you have to retain it. So here is a little caveat because it's during histopathology assessment and or pathology peer review. So currently, what is peer review? Peer review is a a review, like I'm reading a toxicologic uh, study, a toxicolo toxicopathologic study, and there is a peer review as part of this whole study. Peer review is that somebody else is looking if I did my job uh, well. Basically a second pair of pathology eyes. And this is a part of the, part of the GLP study evaluation. It's a, it's a process that's happening routinely. It's not that let's say, oh, I only have so many years of experience. There's always, this is uh, very often, not always, but very often included in the study design that there is going to be a peer review. Somebody else, usually from the organization that is commissioning this study is going to check, okay, uh, do they agree with my diagnosis? They usually have more information about the compound I'm evaluating, about uh, previous studies that has been uh, with the compound. So they want to see, okay, am I seeing uh, stuff that's similar? How does it fit into the full picture? So they're being my peer reviewer. But I am, uh, there, there are questions. And so I'm going to finish this sentence and go to Rita's questions. Um, so I am, uh, but I still am the author of the primary report. I'm the author of the data. This peer reviewer, peer review pathologist is giving me like 
advice, giving me feedback, and then we have to agree on this. But the final decision, or disagree, we can disagree as well. If we disagree, too bad. We have to figure, figure stuff out. But um, the final decision is mine. And that means that the what peer review pathologist is doing, and currently you can read uh, a study on glass and have a peer reviewer uh, view it, review it digitally. So their information is not really data because data is my report. Only what I put in this report is data. So there is a little bit of controversy. Oh, do we really need to uh, retain those slides if it's only for peer review? And uh, there is a little bit of discussion in the industry uh, because we don't uh, currently don't do it. Uh, but this document is open for discussion uh, or for comments. I think maybe this uh, period is already um, already closed. But everybody who wanted to comment on that already had the chance to do that. Um, and hopefully there is going to be a different version later. So, um, yeah. Another thing to this question too, and we have like eight questions. I'm spending a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time on one question, but uh, this basically disappears if your primary review is digital. Then you have to retain those slides anyway, and uh, it doesn't matter if peer review was done on digital, on glass, you retain your slides. So basically, uh, assuming at some point everybody's going to go digital and do digital evaluation, you don't have the problem anymore. You have to uh, archive your slides anyway. So. Let's uh, address a question. Question uh, from Rita, for how long should we retain the digital image? Same as the glass slide. Uh, yes. So um, this is all in um, the institution standard operating procedures. But basically, because this is what the data was generated from, it has to be retained as long as all the other study material. So yes, it basically becomes another piece of data in this uh, in this instance because it's digital but uh, another piece of something that we have to keep with all the other stuff that we're archiving for a study and let us move to question number three question number three if the whole slide images files are, are retained should the glass slides also be retained the answer here is yes they quickly answered in the first sentence. So, uh, and that kind of goes back to your question, Rita. The glass slides are study specimen and must be retained as study specimens after study fi finalization in accordance to this 21 CFR Part 58. Uh, this is code of federal regulation uh, that we are um, following if we're doing GLP work. And then, what question four, what should be retained with respect to the whole slide image file? Should modified whole slide images files, should modified whole slide images files be retained? Yeah, image files be retained, sorry. Uh, and the question is, the, the, the answer is here. So first of all, when we're capturing those images, uh, we should not modify the file. So then if you don't modify the file, then there is nothing additional that you are uh, retaining. But often modification uh, happens uh, when you are doing image analysis. And image analysis is being done for GLP studies as well. And then in that instance, you do retain the modified files. You do retain the or originals. You do retain the modified. The purpose is slightly different. It's not just primary evaluation uh, that you use digital instead of glass. But um, so you, you have different type of outputs. You're maybe counting something or trying to quantify something with image analysis tools, uh, and you then uh, do retain it. But let's check verbatim what they're telling us. Um, yes, so um, here, the whole slide image files referred to here as the original whole slide image files should be retained. So the originals, we retain the originals. Uh, but any technical image processing modifications made to whole slide images files prior to being provided to pathologists should be documented and retained. Uh, this is not really happening. And you should get the original, as a pathologist, you should get the original. Uh, and so then 
you don't have to document anything. If there is some smoothing color manipulation uh, happening before you get the slides, then of course you have to uh, document it and uh, retain this information. But um, here they also say that viewing software should not allow the original whole slide image to be changed. So you are just viewing this slide. What you can do there, like you can do on your computer screen, you can adjust the brightness, adjust some contrast, but this is something you do under the microscope as well. So this is allowed, not like regulated, doesn't have to be documented because you are not changing the original image. So this is totally fine here. Uh, Brightness contrast do not need to be documented or retained. It's basically my personal preference as a pathologist. Uh, I want it brighter, less bright, whatever. I, I can change it and not tell anybody about it. Ain't that cool? I think it's cool. <laughs> so now here, another question of ours. I wish I had different colors. I for sure I can have different colors, right? Or maybe not. Doesn't matter. Should written procedure for whole slide imaging process be in place? Yes. Basically, if you work in GLP, you need written procedures for anything. And um, the more I work in GLP, the more I realize it. Before, when I started, I didn't know how strict that is. But in GLP, there is even a format mandated for how you sign stuff, how you how you put in the date, how you correct uh, input data. Like you have written procedures for everything. So obviously this is a big deal that you can now uh, look at slides under if, instead of under the microscope on the monitor. So yeah, there should be written procedure for that. So yes, that's what FDA says. FDA says yes. Uh, should be in place, written procedures. They might include scanning, validation, training, maintenance, software version control, backup, disaster recovery, everything, everything, everything. But this everything, do not be terrified. This everything is what you usually do for any computerized system and for anything uh, in GLP, good laboratory practice. You have to protect from all this stuff, from virus protection even, uh, and disaster protection, anything. So um, yes, the answer is yes. Question number six, should the whole slide image systems be validated? I'm actually surprised that there's no uh, yes here, but uh, there is a qualifier. So as again, if we are using whole site images instead of glass, which is in lieu of the original glass slides during histopathology assessment, and here this peer review as well. Uh, well, peer review, yeah, that's fine. The only the archival part uh, was a little bit controversial. Uh, performed under GLP, then yes, we have to validate. Is that a surprise? No, because we have to validate everything for GOP. Uh, if you are doing non-GOP, then you don't have to validate. But for GLP, yes, any computerized system. So why am I saying a computerized system here? Because digital pathology uh, system is a computerized system. So basically, this uh, here, this guidance that we're going through is kind of telling us how to deal with whole slide images uh, as a computerized system and how to apply whole slide images to what is already written in the uh, 21 CFR part uh, 58. Part 11 is for computerized systems. If anybody knows exactly, I can Google it later. But I think part 11 is for computerized system. Part 58 is for uh, the non-clinical work. But uh, there is a GLP regulation for computerized system. And there is exactly written, what do you do with a computerized system? So you take this digital pathology system, you say, oh, it's a computerized system. What are the components of the computerized system? Hmm, it's this, that, scanner, viewer, whatever, uploading of slides, and you validate them. So yeah, no surprise there. So going to our next, yeah, here, FDA themselves says should be validated and maintained in manner specific to the intended use. That, that's important as well. Intended use. Oh, can I change? Yeah. Intended use. So intended use, um, which is what you specify in your SOPs. And basically it's specified uh, a system should not be used in a way that's not intended to be used. So 
important thing. But basically, yes. Okay, let's go back to yellow. And question number seven. How should whole slide image files be protected, including when transmitted to external users? Well, so these are digital files. We have to protect them somehow. So if um, they are, again, assess and layout of the original glass slides, because also at the beginning of this document, um, it's written there that it does not apply to uh, pathology consultations and education uh, and like all those ways that we already are using host light images for um, everything else than primary uh, study evaluation. So for that, we can use them, no problem. But here, if we want to use them again in layer of original glass slides, we have some stuff uh, to take care of. So generation of backup file chain of custody, access controls, securing data systems and data transmission, written procedures again, in compliance with electronic records. So this is then, this is becoming an electronic record. And in any, uh, if uh, at any point of time you have a question, uh, give me the question. I'm happy to answer the question, hopefully, or refer you to uh, whoever knows the answer to this question. So, uh, but basically, this slide becomes then electronic record. So digital pathology system is a computerized system. When in doubt, you go to, oh, what do I do with the computerized system? A digital pathology slide is an electronic record. So when in doubt, how do you deal with electronic records? And this is basically what you do with electronic records. You, you have a backup file, you like have a chain of custody, not everybody can access, uh, and everything that you have to do to be compliant. So that is taking us to our last question. And the last question is, should the signed pathology report slash peer review statement state that whole slide images were evaluated in lieu of glass slides without looking at the answer? What do you think the answer is? Drop me in the comments. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to drop that in the comment because the answer, of course, is yes. Yes. Everything has to be stated. Everything has to be clear. Everything has to be traceable. So yes, we have to say this particular study was evaluated on digital slides. If we're doing GLP, if we're doing primary evaluation for a GLP on digital slides. So again, uh yes yeah, so we have some yeses good fantastic um yeah also if pathology review uh, pathology peer review is conducted uh on digital slides then we say that it was done on digital slides you know given that uh, we have validated everything systems work everything uh, there are sop standard operating procedures in place and all that jazz so this is what fda is telling us about using of host light images. And why I'm so happy about this document as well is because the, um, I mean, here they are saying, do what you should do for computerized systems, do what you should do for electronic records. We kind of had that information uh, already before because it's not the first uh, computerized system and it's not the first electronic record that uh, is being retained or de dealt with under GLP. But now FDA is actually telling our community, our digital pathology community, um, hey guys, here it's, it's guidance. It's just, uh, you know, draft guidance, but we know you are using it. We're this is how we are fine with you using it. This is the way uh, you can apply your current regulation to this new form of data, new form of computerized systems. So thank you very much, FDA, for putting out that guidance. Even though it's draft, even though we are still waiting for comments, uh, there is a guidance for the industry. So for anybody who is questioning or who is asking themselves, can we use those whole slide images? Like, how do we use them? It's written right here. 
And now I thank you very much for being here with me and talk to you the next time. Bye.